Thousands of homes on the island of Portland in Dorset are to be evacuated after the discovery of a wartime German bomb. For 50 years, it's been lying under what used to be a football pitch. The unexploded bomb was found by quarry workers. 4,000 people are to be cleared from their homes on Portland while a Second World War bomb is made safe. The device has been buried beneath a football pitch for the past 50 years. Details on that story from Andrea Thomas. They've dug up a thousand pound bomb. If the bomb detonated, it would give a pretty large crater out there. It's a fairly big one, 500 kilograms, a meter and a half long. No one knows why it didn't go off. That and its age make it more dangerous. Today, the army have been preparing for the hazardous job of making the bomb safe over the weekend. First, they have to remove the fuse, then the explosives inside the bomb. A few sandbags and a flimsy cordon is all that currently protects this latest World War II bomb site. A quarry worker stumbled on it purely by accident. Hello, me. My name is Superintendent Brian Thornley. Uh, who commands the policing of the Weymouth Division, which includes Weymouth and Portland. And I'm speaking to you first because it is my job to coordinate the effort which will lead to the defusing of a dangerous bomb, which I'm sure by now you are all aware has been found on what used to be Portland United's football ground. Uh, somewhere on the western penalty spot, I'm told. Um, and uh, that device, sadly, contains something over £1,000 of high explosive. At the current time, it is stable. But it won't stay that way if it's not dealt with. And the bomb disposal experts have advised Dorset Police that the, the advice is that it is necessary to evacuate an area of a thousand metres around that site. Now obviously that is a major task. We only knew about it last Thursday and as a result called an emergency meeting which included representatives of all the local organisations while the discovery of a World War II bomb is not in itself remarkable, the fact that this is the site of a former football pitch has surprised the club. Until recently, Portland FC had played here since the end of the war, the bomb lying dormant almost directly under the penalty spot. Well, I consider myself very lucky that I'm still here and be able to talk to you about it. Graham Roberts did play on Portland's ground possibly 10, 12 years ago when he was with Weymouth. I mean, that's a famous international player, and so I think probably think that they're very grateful that nothing happened while they played there. Certainly the club itself will be very relieved when the whole process is cleared up. 4,000 people are preparing to leave their homes in what's been described as Britain's biggest peacetime evacuation. A third of Portland is being evacuated for 48 hours. 4,000 people are having to leave the area immediately surrounding the bomb. The two main roads to the south of the island are being sealed, so thousands more will be cut off from the outside world. And there's bad news for another 4,000 people living in Southwell and Portland Bill. While the bomb's being defused, they'll be cut off from the mainland. Here they're insisting on a 48-hour window and a mass evacuation because of the difficult conditions. The bomb is held absolutely solid in the surrounding rock and the limestone has sort of recalcified and it's got a very tight grip of it. Now that rock has to be extracted and dug out by hand. So whoever the bomb disposal officer is, he's going to have uh, quite a heavy job on his hands. But the man handed the job of defusing this bomb will be staring at a device many times bigger, but he isn't getting the jitters. I'm going down to a, a dinner to a friend of mine who's being dined out of the army in Plymouth. Um, so I won't be losing sleep. I should be having a couple of beers, I expect. Tomorrow, fully sober, he will remove the fuse cap and pour in a salt solution to clog up the explosive mechanism. Two holes are then drilled in the bomb casing, and the explosive is steamed out. Then the fuse is detonated and the explosive burned. What are the odds of this bomb going off while you're near it? Well, because I'm doing it, I would suggest that they're, uh, they're very minimal. Um, 
However, if I do find that there's a problem with it, uh, I'll deal with that. What is the most dangerous part of the operation? Um, I, I think the most dangerous part is the, uh, the actual drilling of the fuse um, so that I can get a solution in there to, to desensitise it, to, to make it safer. Uh, so that's certainly, as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the worst part of the job. You'll see on the right hand side here uh, the fuse pocket itself, and you'll see that the, at the top there's um, what's called a fuse extension cap. Now, for me to be able to deal with the bomb, I need to know what fuse is on there. Um, the Germans were very clever, and they, they made this thing called a fuse extension cap to, to disguise uh, what type of fusing it had. Um, so what I have to do is I have to actually drill out that fuse extension cap before I can actually do that. And I do that using a piece of machinery called a trepan machine. The fuse itself is the cap which you see just underneath that. And as I've just explained, once I've drilled out the fuse extension cap, I can uh, decide what that is. The next part of the operation, as far as I'm concerned, is that I actually have to get in there and drill into that fuse um, and put a solution into the fuse to make the fuse safe. Now, you, as, as you can imagine, this is uh, quite a lengthy... But I can uh, uh, make you quite certain that I will be running faster than Linford Christie if I hear it ticking. My family are quite concerned about me, obviously. Uh, mothers always are. But I've told everybody else I've put a clean pair of pants on for her, so she should... Well, not for her. Should anything happen? Come Friday evening, you will notice that police activity will be considerably increased. And by Saturday morning, when the evacuation is getting underway, there will be over 100 police officers within or on the perimeter and within the area enclosed by that perimeter. And they say they're acutely aware of the need to protect householders against looting. There will be no looting. The, the area will be sterilised. There will be police officers on duty throughout the whole time that people's houses are empty to ensure that they are safe and the officers will stay there until the people return. At noon tomorrow, the only people left in this part of Portland will be policemen and army bomb disposal experts. Everyone else has got to disappear. Some say they won't go. They're worried about the security of their homes and they question the need for evacuation on such a huge scale. Oh, hello. hello. I wonder if I could have a chat about the evacuation. Uh, well, we've, well, we've the... seen you all, Stuart. So yeah. So it's all been dealt with. It's all been dealt with, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean I, the trouble is we, we've been given the job of just checking to yeah. help people if they need help no, or I whatever. No, don't need any help, thank okay. you, Stuart. Okay, just yeah. stay put. Yeah. See, the difficulty is that the, well, you went to the meeting last night, yeah. you refer, the bomb disposal people have told us yeah. and the police that they, they, won't, they won't move, they won't start until the area is evacuated. That's, that's the difficulty we've got. And now we've got people coming in saying, well, I'm moving out, why, well, why are there two well, different rules? Well, it's, it's a very difficult thing, I know. No, nobody wants to go. I mean, absolutely nobody wants oh, to go. No, but but 95% of the people are yeah. accepting yeah. the position. Yeah. And, we're just trying to avoid any delays and things like that, mm. but uh, to be able to do that's right. It's, it's not so much the windows, it's the, I mean, they've demonstrated to me quite clearly mm. that if, if it did blow, and the trouble is the fuse is so volatile now, underneath it, there's the, the actual um, mm. fuse mechanism, they don't mm. know which it is, but underneath that, there is a, uh, the substance that will have gone crystalline and is extremely volatile. Mm. If it did blow, where it's now near the surface, literally on the surface, it's wedged within rock. What you would get, and there's no question about it, that within the thousand metre radius you would get rocks and white hot shrapnel mm. falling anywhere, mm. anywhere within that zone. It mm. would go through roof like butter. Mm. Mm. That's the difficulty. Mm. That's why, the, see, the, the, the bomb disposal person has said that uh, he's got enough stress as it is. I know uh, he's, he has. he's trained to cope with it himself. I know he has. What he doesn't want is extra stress having to worry about other no, people. But he wanted well, yeah, I mean, as far as that's concerned, nobody's had the time. Well, we've, we've had literally days to organise this. We, uh, first, we knew about the scale of it was last Thursday, mm. and we've had to organise everything. Mm. And few people, no, Very, very few. Yeah. I mean, a lot have started off, and I mean, I've had 
Well, that's what I'm doing now. I'm just going around, just trying to um, explain to people and help if there's anything that can be done. Because, uh, and really, we've literally just got a handful. Some have got very severe problems, and they're going to they're going to make the effort and, mm. and go. Mm. You know, people with um, have very severe health problems, and they they don't want to move. We've got people with agoraphobia mm. haven't been out for years, no. but they are they're going to be escorted away with all the help that anybody yeah. can give them. Yeah. Well, anyway, if you were giving lists of people that need accommodation and need social help and, and everything like that to whoever needed is yeah. needed, obviously we've got to account if, if somebody says they're staying put, we've got to notify the police that, that somebody may be there. So, I mean, it's up to them what they do next. I don't know, I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. See, if you need the accommodation, it's there. You know, yeah. it'll be, and the transport will be arranged if you need it. Good and it'll be picked up. For the sake of everybody else around who is moving, it would, would be very helpful if you, if you could. Because uh, um, <laughs> well, that's all right. No, no problem with that. Oh, no, we're no. we're going to get. I was with Southern National yesterday. They're going to lay on buses yeah. to pick up anybody that needs it on a Saturday morning, mm. and you know, just for the two nights. And the accommodation is good. Yeah. Food, food. Will we say the two? Sorry. Will we say that the two? Well, it'll be out at the one of the Haven Warner caravan sites. Oh, yeah. Probably oh, the the Chesil Beach. Over the yeah, the little sea. No, yeah, little sea. There's little sea and the Chuzzle Beach one. Yeah, They're the two. Maybe, the one, maybe yeah. one of the Preston ones. Depends. If we don't know the total numbers yet, but no, yeah. a lot of people are making their own arrangements. But uh, a lot of people well, need yeah. need help. But there's there's a lot of people just working to help people. That's all it's all it's about. That's right. I mean, obviously they'll be making their own security arrangements at the pubs, but uh, I mean, they're very worried well, about they it. Said that Position is that nobody will be allowed in the zone, but the police will be doing. Yeah. They, they will be looking after the pubs. I mean, there's a hundred extra police drafted in. Well, they, they, animal, they, they well animals are the problem. Sense. Well, Portland will never have seen as many policemen as you'll be getting this weekend. <laughs> hundred plus. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. Animals are one of the biggest problems. I mean, we've got yeah, I got people. one Jack Russell. Ah, well, too okay. It's, well, it's when, got fully, but you want to tell you. Well, there's one one in uh, Reform. There's nine people living in a three-bedroom house. They've got five dogs, four cats, and a budgie. Well, RSPCA are making an appeal for people on the mainland to take animals yeah. to, to help out. Yeah. We'll oh, be yeah. quiet. Topical yeah. will never have been so quiet in its history, I don't think. <laughs> Okay. Well, anyway, but if you need any help or advice, just yeah. pop in the office or we'll yeah, come back. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much then. Other islanders are entering into the evacuation spirit, happy to recreate a wartime atmosphere. Most accept they've got to leave. It's not really that much trouble, so... Apart from we just moved here on Friday and now we've got to move out next weekend, so... <laughs> we've only been here a week. You know, I understand the danger. It is inconvenient, but there's nothing you can do about it. If something went wrong, who do you blame? So it's best to do as you're told and get out, isn't it? In most households, the evacuation is being treated as an excuse for a short holiday, with parents and children alike determined to make the most of a weekend away. An evacuation centre has been open 12 hours a day since the emergency began. Officials have been going from door to door, making sure everyone knows they've got to leave. Hello there, come to collect your evacuation form. There you go. Right. Okay, That's I'm lovely. staying Thank away. You. Signs have been going up warning motorists to keep away, and a telephone hotline has been open all week. I've uh, taken on board all the ones that you've let us know our refusals and the ones that we haven't had forms back. I, I've personally visited uh, quite a number of the uh, refusals and had about a, I suppose, about a 40% success rate in persuading. There are all sorts of reasons why people don't want to move and several contacts that we've been un unable to make. I've already passed a list of the blatant ones to the police and the social services who are taking it on. I think that's really our role finished as soon as when we reach that stage. But. Having said that, the, this next letter still should go to every property. Assembled over the last week. This is why it's important that we have the continuity of everybody that's here who's had all the experience. I mean, the range of questions that are thrown at people when they knock at doors um, is, well, anybody here will tell you, it's been enormous. And they, the office this morning has been as busy as, as it has ever been with people with follow-up questions. So anybody... There could only really be one person, apart from the police, uh, responsible for a particular zone. And you know, the, the arrangement up to this time is that 
everybody here the is the one responsible for their the 257 out of the 4,000 people. So what I wanted to do was take those 257 people yeah, we, out of the system. They can deal with I, them, I, and you yeah. have to deal with. Three I don't think they'd be taken out of the system because the people that have been round have already been making the contacts with those same people. I think there needs to be very close cooperation, and and I think really at the end of the day, the people that we have here must try and take an overview of their patch. If they say, "Oh, I'm not going to bother with number 64." Uh, that I don't think that would work. I think it must must be. Yes, I think it's important they re everybody reports to the new position, which will be in Western, opposite Cortlands, near the Pel just below the Pelican Crossing. There. Uh, it is early, but unfortunately, um, we, we've got to be ready in position before people start moving. The can you please be available at six o'clock in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> if anyone can't manage it, please say so here and now because we've got to obviously fit anyone in. I'm sorry it's so early that people will be moving in. Um, sorry? Uh, we, we don't know what problems obviously are going to arise on Saturday morning. Hopefully it'll be nice and smooth and everybody will come out you know, when, when they are required to. But it is really to, to mop up any any latent, any outstanding problems and it's, as Mr Ashby said, it, it is very much going to be a question of playing by ear. Mm. Well, the, the letter has actually asked people to be available from uh, uh, from 7 o'clock, isn't it? 7.30 rather, 7.30. So they, they will be told tomorrow to get up early virtually. Um, yeah. Well, their own transport, we've all been telling them to move off as early as they can, uh, but obviously they've got up until, well, uh, really up until midday to move off, but we're, we're encouraging everybody to move out as quickly as possible, and certainly by mid-morning, if you realise there are still people in your zone, um, I think that's the time to go around knocking and, and shoving them along, really. Yeah. Yes, I think it's important that you stay in the area all the morning. Yeah. The police operation has already started. There are already in hand patrols. My responsibility, I'm a, a public order commander, and I will have six police support units at my command on Saturday morning to ensure that the evacuation from a police perspective is carried out safely and securely and that we're satisfied as to the security of the premises. I'll have a lot of police officers who will do as I tell them. The way that we will be operating, let's uh, tell them the circle now, is that we will establish a perimeter control on that circle. That perimeter from about 1100 hours on Saturday morning will become an outwards only sieve so that people on the inside can get out after 11 but from 11 no one will be allowed in except under police escort and that of course has to be the case because this end of the island uh, there could be a need to get ambulances through there or whatever um, is it secure at the front and the rear they're not going to be climbing into places to uh, go and catch people's locks but as far as possible identifying that the premises are secure and I notice the advice in your letter the curtains should be left open so that we can see into uh, properties. Once the evacuation has been completed we will then say to that army liaison officer it's all yours. If we have seen, because we've got spotter planes, police officers around the outside, we've got night sights for light, uh, night time, you know, special binoculars and, uh, and all the business, dogs. I see the police have just arrived with their mountain bikes, mountain bike in the boot of his car. Police officers on trail bikes for the, for the rough pits. If they have seen people moving about um, w within the area, we'll be able to plot up where they are in one of those closed bits, we'll just go and arrest them. Um, there will be no messing about during that exclusion phase. If people have been moving about in there, someone's decided to hold themselves up in the lot. You know, we haven't found them during the evacuation. If someone decides to pop out uh, and go and see how they're getting on, I I'm afraid they will be arrested. Denise, sorry, could you tick off uh, the names of 
everybody that's arrived, please. You've done that. You've done it. You've been doing it. I've got to, got to trust the staff. <laughs> yeah. 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 What I'm trying to establish is how many people are, how many are yet to arrive. Lovely. Good. Right. That's right. Where, where are you going to be? Uh, Denise, have we got a spare operation book anywhere? Yeah, blue ones. Yes. That was a struggle. We only had four in total, and the YOI wanted two, doctors wanted two. The case all round, isn't it? Yeah, well, some guinea, guinea pigs and the pigeons and... Oh, I see. So you've got a key to somebody's house, have you? Just looking for those who didn't get the briefing just now. Okay. But basically, it is... I mean, your role is really to uh, take an overview of your patch, your zone. You'll find other people who are going to be there. Apart from the police, there's going to be a, a team assembled by Derek Whitaker, who are who is largely going to be Freemasons or volunteers organised by the Freemasons. They'll be identified, but their role is simply to deal with the people that need transport and, and to make sure and to help them onto the buses, basically. As far as anything else is concerned, if they find any problems, they should really report to you. They, they've probably been told to report back to Derek Whitaker or, or something. They can do that as well if they want. But uh, uh, it's important that you try and make contact with them, anybody that you see in your area, and say, and just ask them if they've got any problems, let you know, then you can let us know here and the, the system can hopefully work. But it is going to be a question of trying to watch people leave if you can tick off as you see them leave you're not going to be able to see everybody because around the corner they may be going they're going to be um, leaving of their own accord it's important that through the morning obviously you'll be able to tick off the ones that you know have gone if you see any problems where people are not moving or if there's signs of life and nobody's coming out uh, obviously we need to know about those so that we can tell the police and afterwards it's important that you report back here when you think your patch is clear, it's all getting very quiet, and you, you think it's actually clear and you've done the job, later in the morning, can you come back here physically to, to report that? Yeah. And then we'll, um, we'll let the police know. That's when the police take over. Mm. They'll then be, um, if, they, if there's sign of life, they'll be going in yeah. with, a, with a bit of a heavier hand. But hopefully it'll be straightforward. It's, well, I mean, midday is, is the deadline, um, but obviously if you've got to get out of the cordon, allow yourself time to get out but yeah, so well, really we got here to we'll, we'll no no the cordon at 11 o'clock i just yeah. been, in case anybody didn't get this yesterday the cordon that's being set up will operate from 11 o'clock that's going to actually be a filter outwards in the police's words they're going to allow people out after 11 o'clock but nobody in and at 12 o'clock it's a, an absolute cordon obviously they don't want anything to move uh, well they want ev everything to be clear so that the operation can start so, um, obviously, at 11 o'clock or by 11 o'clock, hopefully you will have seen your area evacuated. So if you come back here then, then hopefully we can <laughs> release you and send you on your way. So they won't be going to 11. If a lot aren't going they to 11, shouldn't, we can't go to They the shouldn't have said that. They, they should. Said that. I said, no, you've got to go. They said, no, I'm going when I am. I don't want to go, but I'm going to go when I am. Well, OK. To here later on. If there are still people milling around at 11, they need to be shooed along very, very rapidly. The police will do it. Well, We'll do what we can, yeah. and then obviously the police, yeah, the police will be in presence anyway by 11. Yeah. I was just worried about getting back out again. If, if we were late through them out, and then we're late here, we'll be late getting out again. Will we be able to get out again? Yeah, you'll be able to get out, no, you know, as long as you've got your jacket on and you yeah. sign up. But uh, say that they have made contact and they have now decided they may move. Uh, yeah, not, not to knock on their door. Any other ones in there in your patch? 55 Wakeham are moving. 25 make them, make them. Yeah, she's gone. Right, yeah, she's gone. But they're moving today, yeah. That's um, right, Miss Brambleby, she's gone. Right. She would have gone. Yeah, what about my floods? Um, didn't get any reply. There's, d there's no three and seven. Mm. Um, the police couldn't get any reply no, either. So just assume um, there's nobody there. Yeah. If about nine? You could knock on nine, is nine and four are okay. Right. They should be going. Yeah. So it's just but three. Again, I, I should, I should give a last there. knock yeah. on, on the three and seven just in case anybody's come back yeah. they, they think they may have been away for the week and yeah, this is yes right we better get this on the computer yeah 
Is the computer not going again? Oh, dear, okay. Right, okay. Let's go in and see if we can make contact with the helpline. Then. Oh, hello, Stuart Morris here, Western. Um, can you check reform? Uh, they do require accommodation, but uh, the last we had, there's, there's nothing allocated. Chesel 177. Right, okay, that's, that's, that's fine, lovely. Yep, thanks very much then. Bye. Right. Haven Warner, Chesel 177. Have we let the police know on that one? Ah, in, but not answering door. That's what well, we've told them. Uh, okay, but obviously up to you. If you would rather not ring them up again. If you want the door, when the majority of people are on their way, there's lots of What I should do is knock the door and run. <laughs> Keep knocking the door every time you pass it and run. That's right. Are they, are they a bit fierce? We just don't come. Just kept on, just kept on the door. The first time we went, they were quite quite reasonable, and then the second time they weren't. Yeah. She didn't come to the door at all. She stared at us out the door. She knew we were. And yeah. then... Um, after that, the next night, when we dropped the last letter, everything, the blinds were down, the curtains were yeah. down, you can't see in there at all, so I don't okay. know if they're in there, if they're not in there, so... Yeah, 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 okay, everybody all right? Yeah, there's one on mine, I've got transport for a quarter past seven. I told everybody on Friday, or Thursday night, yeah. they've got their own transport. Yeah, okay, I think what a transport tried to stop it's a, well, from knocking them up, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's right, yes. Yeah. I mean, nobody's going to be turned off the coach, I don't think, if they, uh, you know, if they find that they haven't got transport for any reason, as long as they know where they're going. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry. Oops, okay. <laughs> All right, then. Okay, keep keep in touch. Keep... No, a bit before that, I would think, you know. Yes, what are we now? Half past six, yeah. No, it's a bit, it's a bit early at half past six, really. You can't start knocking up. But... <laughs> six was a bit early, actually. We can't start knocking yeah. people up. I mean, it's pitch dark. Yeah, um, just along Park Road. I'll be there in about 10 seconds. Over. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I mean, we were all geared up. For the, for the last three months, I've been yeah. involved in a, you know, at our end on the Borough Council with the uh, exercise Ghost Techs, which is, I don't know if you've heard about that. No, and that, that is a, a, a simulated train crash in Binkham Tunnel between Weymouth oh, and right? Dorchester. And when is that going to come up? It's the 22nd, yeah. I think, of April. Is it April? So, you know, we've all been planning that and yes. arranging all the traffic diversions. Well, uh, you know, it's been you planned down to the... Well, that's right. I mean, yes. and we had... Everybody had about a day and a half to, yes. to plan this from scratch. I mean, there's no contingency at all for this type no. of situation. Not a mass evacuation on this scale. No. How many have you got? How many minibuses have you got? Two. Two. And you were just told to report here. Yeah, David Chatterton One person hadn't been told of her transport arrangements. She's got to be ready in 20 minutes. Oh, so we couldn't have done without the radio link. That's good. Feedback is um, proving very, very useful. So we, we've, uh, I, bus number two was, was, was nearly an hour late. I don't know what happened there. Due to 7.15. To, uh, get some transport over. Okay, Chris, we'll get back to you with some special arrangements. Standing by. It's managing an ordinary car. Over. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Over. Okay, we've got one standing by in Victoria. We'll be with them as soon as possible. Over. Okay, thanks very much. Be advised, standing by. Oh, very much so. I mean, the departure yesterday, I don't know if you went, saw any of the cars going off with. Bunting and yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. And in Dorset this afternoon, despite the refusal by some residents to leave the area, 4,000 people have already been evacuated. Portland has been on the move since first light, street by street, heading for the mainland. The first reaction, really and truly, was it was uh, just a scare. But um, as the bomb disposal man made it clear, it was, it's more dangerous than we thought. But anyone uh, worrying about being late, they will be dealt with. Thank you for that information, Derek. Standing by. Cars will pick up people who. Yeah. Three to Western Control. B three was that. Mm. Repeat, over. Can we have the radio? Right just left Grosvenor Road, over. 
Thank you, standing by. Move up ready, right side, move ready. Mm, yeah. Don't, don't take it. Go in. Go in. All right. All right. Oh, I know. Don't I know. The, I know. It's okay. getting to everybody. Keep it calm. And we've got a lot, very long hours. Okay. Well, you won't get it to us. We won't be able to get it to us unless somebody's going to walk the cliff. It was all day tomorrow and all day. I don't know why they were told that because some of them are not going to be until nine fifteen. Yeah. Walking down, they're going to private accommodation. They'll get themselves back again, but they've got nowhere to get off the island, eh? Right? Okay, yeah. Um, the, the, the refusal. Yeah, they, our person in the area is, is lowered into play. They think they're not answering the door, and they think it's the refusal. It's one of the people who got. They are. They have got. Yes. That was, let's, let's make a note then of. We better have one list. Facts on. Yeah. Of the really problem people. Yeah. We'll let the police know about. Morning, control. Do we let them know if they occur or what? It's calling. Hold on. And there is Denise up at the Western Control Office. Uh, we've had a call in from one of our officers. We've got a resident at 50 to two residents. Uh, medical condition, they're expecting the social services to collect them. Do you, can you confirm that? I haven't got a name on that. Okay, thanks. I don't know what, what I'm saying, excuse me, but who are you? They're taking my people. Did it? Did it? Did it not have the big number one on the front, like I asked? No. I no, I only the normal, only the normal sort of yeah. No. And I, I mean, it would have been a very simple operation to have had bus, bus A, B, C, and D, which people were told which one to go to. Yeah, that's right. But because they weren't wearing armbands, look at look out for. Might have been getting on anything. That's why it's raining. I was really quite scared about it. Torquay or something. There is a chap, somebody whose car has broken down, so... Um, oh, man. <laughs> I was a question of standing by. There may be a few mopping ups to be done. C14, please report on your bus situation, over. All pickups have been made. Oh, right. Thank you, standing by. Looks like another one that's done, then. So these Which area is that? That's oh, for and Prudence. Greenways and Park Road through there. That's very good. So, we can try, mm. we can try. Mm. Who's, who's doing Eastern Square. Well, it's Rich, clear, Rich, Richard come back <coughs> Richard's <coughs> Yeah, Richard's area is clear. Um, Ray Gray's is clear. These are all clear. Who's D3? Park Road, they've done that a lot there. D3 is here. <laughs> <laughs> the two invalids, their daughters, <laughs> and their oh. cat. No, cat. Uh, their <coughs> dog. <laughs> that that he came along last night um, and he said, if we do go, and when he, he draws it, we'll read down as a refusal. If we do go, where would we go, and can we have a choice? Uh, we, you know, we told them the selection which is being used, but we, so we couldn't guarantee it would be any particular one. It was clear that he was wavering and was quite prepared to go. He said, well, I'll, I'll go back and uh, talk to my wife and see if I can persuade her. We had a lit message later on last night that um, absolutely no, we're not going to go. We're not going to go. So obviously, he had a bit of a dispute there, and he's under her thumb. <laughs> She's made the decision. They're not going. And the person's gone along this morning, and the curtains are drawn, and they're not answering the phone, and they are uh, staying put, so we're going to pass that to the police. Very, very few. Yeah, sure. they're very few. Yeah, that's right. Uh, there are very, very few that have actually refused right to now. Yeah, there's just a handful, the most. I think, I think most people. That's it. No, I think the, the police attitude from the start has been helpful because they didn't take the confrontational view that, well, yes, well, you will invoke section so and so of yeah, this act, will. therefore you will go. They've they refrained. I mean, they deliberately tried not to bring in the law side of it, the legal powers side of it, um, and say no, we're just trying to persuade people, and that's what we've been doing. Obviously, we've been saying, you know, your neighbours are going, just owe it to them not to cause any delay, let the poor chap get on with his job, and uh, it's been very handy, everybody seeing a face behind the uh, on disposal team, you know, the, yeah, putting him up front, he's got a lot, we had a lot of cards in the office yesterday for him, so, you know, the whole system has gone very well really, so, and it's being appreciated for a change. Coverage, TV and press wise. B3 to enter control. Yeah. Good to Yeah. Go ahead B3 over. Confirm with social services that the chap of number 41 has been picked up, over. Please confirm that he has been picked up, over. Right, over. We've got no list of... No, social, social services, services one. Oh, okay. 
Yes. Yeah, the, the, the cord will be at 11. 11. Yeah. So I must be back across the beach. Yes. And up the top hill by 11. That's right. Must be within the cordon by 11, then you'll, you'll be allowed out, but you won't be, definitely won't be allowed in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay, yeah. have to hurry then. Yeah, well, I don't know what the traffic's like. Get it sorted out. Yeah. So, it's these areas marked from blue and green that are being evacuated. That's correct, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, approximately 4,000 people yeah. together with their pets and various livestock. Now, we've heard reports of some people saying they wouldn't go. I mean, are um, any people refusing? Well, there was some confusion at the beginning, obviously, as people have uh, gathered more information and the severity of what's going on has uh, sunk in. Uh, we're down to just one or two people now who are a little, little reluctant to leave, but um, they're, they're, they're convinced now that this is uh, the safest thing for them. And, um, oh, so they're going now? We so. should quite quickly clear the area now. And what happened? BBC London. Uh, London, London Radio. Radio. Have you ever done anything like this before? Uh, no, this was uh, literally thinking on our feet and getting the job done. I mean, you, you, you've got a yellow jacket that says evacuation officer. What, what's your day job? Um, I'm actually work in the parts department and I'm uh, a tech, just a general technical assistant in the borough engineer's office and uh, also take care of all the sports events and things in here. I suppose for a lot of the children, if you know, it's, it's a week of a caravan. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Well done. Very good. Right. Very good. When's that going to be on? I'm getting experts. Sorry, when is that? BBC Radio London. Radio, London yeah. mm. If uh, we'd spent more time doing this job and speaking to the radio and television yeah. this week, we'd be alright. Try that. One element of it, there are lots of people who are uh, in charge of various parts, but uh, the, the evacuation coordination, yes, I'm in charge of that side of it. And so, how many people have you got on the streets, all dressed up in these yellow jackets? We have 34 people out in the field. They all assembled here at first light, before first light this morning, 6 o'clock, and I briefed them on their uh, duties for this morning. And uh, they went off uh, in convoy just now to go to their respective areas to give every assistance and to monitor their designated zone. Do they have a list of names that they are going to tick off as they move out? Yes, they have a list of names, all the people that they have contacted. What we have done is made sure that each of our wardens is the same, they're covering the same area that uh, they made their first contact with nearly a week ago now. And uh, it's important to keep the face-to-face -face contact and the uh, familiarity which they've built up with the people the same. They know their patch fairly well by now. And uh, they will be monitoring the streets in their area to try and ensure that everybody is given every assistance to move out when uh, required. And do you think many people will not move out? A week ago, my answer to that was yes, I thought there would be quite a few. Through the week, the work that our wardens have put in and the uh, backup with the police and the social services has ensured that the numbers are now extremely small and in fact, at the end of the day, people have gone I won't say willingly, but certainly they have accepted the position uh, quite readily and uh, it really is encouraging what has happened. Um, I just talked to a local vicar, Reverend David and I thought Gerish. Said Gerish yes. I, he, just, he said he's been at the briefing meetings, he said it's just amazing what the council have done actually, it's amazing, which is nice. Well it is good, I mean nobody is trained up for this, uh, it's something we've all been detached from our normal duties, nobody's trained up to be an evacuation officer <laughs> these days and uh, really everybody has worked together extremely well and it's, it's credit to everybody concerned all the agencies have worked together marvelous as an exercise it's proved invaluable and with the contacts that we've all made with the with the police personnel and social services and all the other emergency services and churches it's um it, it can only hold good for the future um cooperation with the different agencies but the best cooperation of course is with the people concerned everybody who's had to make the great sacrifice of the upheaval for the weekend. Thank you very much indeed, that's lovely. Right, come back. Many will be heading just across the causeway to the Haven Holiday Centre at Chesil Beach. It's opening a week early to accommodate thousands of evacuees. Yeah, I'm 
Work on the bomb went very slowly during the night. The shell or casing of the bomb is proving to be very tough, and I gather that Captain Mike Lobb has already worn out two bits in the trapano, which is being used to cut the two holes in the for the steaming out of the uh, main fill explosive. However, during the night, Mike Lobb has cut one hole and he has started work on the second. Right. Good. Right. Have you had any... Nobody's phoned under Hill. That's 7.15. statement. Wobbling around too much. Gone. Can you hold it up a bit? Read it. What time is that? 17.15 hours. Pressed only. Steaming out of the main explosive fill completed by 1715 hours. Those press wishing to take shots of the smoke from the burning and the explosion and of the explosive should rendezvous with Mike Maber in the car park at the Masonic Hotel 1800 hours. Then will follow after two hours approximately the detonation of the detonator. Then Mike Lobb will give interviews close to the bomb site. Hmm. I hope he leaves some souvenirs. That's right. Well it's obvious it's blocked when you get to it but it's, <laughs> you've got a lot of people who've got to leave awfully early for work in the morning. They don't want to walk the cliff path and get to the other end and finally could take the car. All right, so that's it. Okay, that's great. Okay, thank you, Grant. Bye. Hmm. So it's. Didn't tell us anything, really. 1800. Steaming, is, steaming out is now completed. So, yeah. uh, of the hut there, next door. Yeah, steaming out of the hut. Steaming out of the hut is now. I can see the steam coming out of the hut. Well, I was standing there, the phone was ringing. The steaming off is completed. 1800 hours for the burn off. 2200 hours, unconfirmed, expected completion. Uh, are they doing that with a hand machine, do you know, or is that remote control? Oh, they're using the trapana for the other two holes as well? Oh, I see. So they've had to dig underneath the bomb uh, in, in another place, obviously, to the... Yeah, and come out the other one, yeah. Mm. They mustn't let it get above 105. Yes. Cool. It's not much latitude then, is it? Can't. Well, last night it was slightly ahead. Uh, overnight, the drilling of the... They've got the fuse out and everything, but overnight the uh, hole, the first of the holes in the casing took longer than they anticipated. It took about six hours to drill a hole. And they've got a second hole to drill now. So, so um, could be late today, we just don't know at the moment. But uh, at least he's working on it. This is the latest position. Yeah, the, the, yesterday they got out the, uh, the fuse. So that was ahead. They were ahead of schedule by, by late yesterday evening, but uh, gone a bit behind again tonight, uh, overnight. Yes, that's right. People have found their legs. That's, that's yeah. what we say. We're, we're going to pedestrianise Top Hill. Every Saturday, <laughs> But it's very, very few in, in in proportion to the total number of people. I mean, we haven't got exact height. evacuation numbers, have we? But it, I mean, it is. Not yet, not to press the magic no, no, I mean, it, it probably is over over the four thousand, yeah. and you know, just to whittle it down to about five uh, five families, five households, and I think yeah. ten people in total. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Is of a different kind for this man. As a German soldier, he was held prisoner in Britain until 1948. 
He and his wife turned up on Portland by chance this week. We used it in Germany because you dropped uh, millions of bombs around our part where we come from. It's a rural part. It's Dortmund, Essen, Bochum, Hagen is our hometown. And if there's somebody building a house, they go on very, very steady because we, we find bombs every week. Is the fog horn going this morning? Yeah, yeah. All those that are okay. sleeping in the bill huts of the uh, <laughs> of this dirt night. Yeah. A couple got back from Baldwin, in Tunisia, apparently. Oh, no. Yeah. Did they? But they got <coughs> the Chisel Beach. Right. Where were they intercepted? I would say that was on my success. Oh, right. that's, um, at Chisel Beach, at the back, yeah. Uh, Jim Grover. Oh, yes. Who was on holiday in Tunisia and yes. didn't know anything about it. Yeah, right. Well, we were expecting those. One or two had phoned home or yeah. were contacted in some way, and uh, their, their families back here made arrangements. For yeah. Who yeah. Inter Sorry, intercepted them at Heathrow then? <laughs> no. Family put a message out. Grounds. That's uh, very clever of somebody to uh, get them that far ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I was expecting quite a few people to be away for whatever reason on work and coming back and not knowing about it, but that's the only one that we know of to date. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure some people do. Some people are, are definitely going to make a weekend of it. Uh, there's a lot of those with children, but... Uh, all right. Okay, thanks for calling. Bye. Oh, crumbs, yes. Well, we've got to check the cliff path. All the notices are on there. But, uh, well, they've got a backpack. Yeah, okay then. Keep you posted. Pity... Uh, they really, it would have been a good idea for somebody to be posted near Blackner Fort. You know, just if they had somebody, a volunteer or a team of volunteers. To, but, you know, just to, uh, just to help, you know, a presence there, yeah. somebody to say, be careful at this point, because it's... Mm. Hopefully, though, I asked Richard to get the whole series. Um, what, what, what was the word? I've forgotten the wording now. Bomb evacuation. Um, the ones, there are ones saying strictly no access, yeah. which are, should be on the ends of all the paths, most of the paths yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah take, take, take care in the cliff edges. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she had a baby, where, where was she? In the hospital? In the, uh, right, so you had to walk all the way along the cliff path. How did I, you I get on? I was terrified. I had to split, as I said, I didn't look down. Just, uh, I don't get vertical, but I just no. can't stand no, high. No, that's right. So I was looking at the feet all the time. Going, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, was it slippery down at the way we went no, past the it was okay, it was right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Many mm -hmm. people walking there right. at the same yeah, time? Yeah, quite a few. Well, not when we went, but coming back last night, there was loads of people with a dog. Yes. So they're going to keep her in, well, obviously, yeah. a couple of days anyway. But, well, it's only best to walk. That's right. Was that it a little boy? Right, yeah. Oh. I wouldn't do it again. So. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> experience. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Safe and sound, and uh, you're making your way back now, or what? Uh, we'll go to some of those fiery corners. It's quite blustery up here. I think we should warn people about the wind conditions. Over. Righty-o, oh, yes. Well, take your time and take care. Uh, over. Standing by. Western control, standing by. The easiest way, as I said, twist your ankle. That's a lot of power. The police just told me they had the chap in, in the Weymouth Nick overnight. Yeah. Friday, sir. No trouble last night in the exclusion zone there. Well, I haven't heard of any. I mean, th we did have the report. Uh, Bob Gardner, PC Gardner, said that um, he had a. He was down in the police station, just going to come off duty, and he had a message that the that there had been three escapees from from the Vern. Oh, which would joking. <laughs> but that's what he was. But when he investigated, when he went up and had the message clarified, uh, it was three people trying to get into the exclusion zone, exclusion zone at the south gate of the Vern. I don't know how the message got garbled. The police oh. system, but there were people trying to break break through the uh, the cordon. They were in, hiding in the tunnels at the high angle battery up there. I hope that's it. I hope nobody else is. Right on the the, the Vern prison is all right, but the uh, the no, YOI no, they're, they're, they're both they're they're both in there, and the uh, YOI the postal at um, Grove is still the occupied. The the but they're keeping them inside. Yeah, they got bomb proof. Yeah. Um, Accommodation there almost. Thousands of people have been moved out of the town of Portland while the bomb is made safe.
A sense of the wartime spirit returned to Portland as residents left their homes this morning, many by the dozens of buses laid on for Britain's biggest peacetime evacuation. Hundreds of people have moved into holiday camps for the operation, which has left another 4,000 people stranded on the south of the island. So, but overall, uh, it was an example, I think, of public authorities like the borough council, the police authority, the county council, particularly with the social services department, but also with the emergency planning team, the statutory undertakers, with, 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 with people like the RSPCA, the local doctors, the local vicar, all being involved and working together. And it, and it worked well. And I think that although one must never be complacent, we, we were entitled to say that we worked well together and the operation was a success. Just hoping at the end of the day there wasn't something just waiting there or, you know, this was going to in fact crack open and some dolly bird was going to jump out and it was in fact an April Fool for me. At 8.40 the army gave the all clear. The barriers were removed and immediately cars and residents moved back into the area. From the holiday parks, coaches started to ferry residents back to their homes. <laughs> I wouldn't say there were some behind the scenes problems uh, in that uh, certain people want, were, were thought that we'd be able to rustle everybody up and get everybody back last night so that the police would be able to go home oh, right. after dark, knocking up, and, and that included the camps and that caused chaos at the camps. Well, it's good for their kids to bed anyway, they they have. People were out for a drink and things like that, they yeah. didn't want to. Once it got dark. No, but that. I think it was very much a success, uh, and it went as planned, uh, as as well as I dare hope. And and I, I have expressed this opinion before, but I think it was down to the cooperation of all the other agencies, and uh, not just a police um, success. We played our part as an agency, but certainly if the um, Port Weymouth and Portland Borough Council had not done what they did. If the RSPCA, for example, hadn't come in and done what they did, uh, the social services people hadn't come in and done what they did, we'd have had major problems. But they all put their shoulder to the wheel. Um, they worked their socks off over the, uh, the week that led up to the event. And it is all credit to everyone that it was so successful. dropped quite a few unexploded bombs in this yard, I don't know. Is that a fact? Yes. Mm. Well, they, found, they found an unexploded bomb only a fortnight ago, that's half a mile from here, I believe. Yes, I read about it. They uh, had the bomb disposal squad drowned. That's right. Oh, brave chap. I was at the bomb disposal squad in Bermuda. How I remember, ten of us were called out one night to dismantle a firework. <laughs> the tricky beast, a jumping jack, it was. We... Didn't know where it was going to go. Still, we kept in our tanks with the hoods down, so we were all right. <laughs> but according to local historian Reg Perry, the whole episode could have been avoided if the authorities acted as soon as they knew the bomb hadn't exploded. He claims that was back in 1943. The records in Dorchester County Record Office um, uh, are principally the, the daily uh, police reports of the Weymouth Division, which includes uh, Portland, show that on that date there was ten bombs dropped by two planes, uh, six on Top Hill and four at Osmington. And the first one, it says, uh, come down on the old football field at Portland. See, it was reported as, by the police as a UXB, which is what they, their short terminology abbreviation for unexploded bomb. But Mr. Perry says as yet he can't explain why no action was taken at the time to make the bomb safe. I've been trying to find uh, some record of, of what followed in the uh, clearance uh, certificates of the bomb disposal squad, but they all seem to be missing concerning Portland. In fact, I found nothing at all on all the documentation is, uh, is just not there. But fellow historian Stuart Morris believes he can offer an explanation as to why the information about the bomb's location never made it from the police to the bomb disposal unit. 
In 1943, Portland decided to have a competition between Underhill and Tophill to see who could salvage the most books and papers and records and things like this. Of course, in the, in the frenzy of competition, we found that a large part of the island's documents that were held by the Portland Council were added to the line. But the tragedy is that uh, so much was lost of the island's archives. I'm not quite sure where the um, ARP warden's posts were at the time, whether they were based in the in the council offices in Fortune's Well, um, and whether any records w were there, but there may have been other records relating to incidents such as this held at the council offices. Meanwhile, Mr Morris says he believes Portlanders won't face any more unhappy surprises from unexploded bombs. Obviously, a lot of bombs were, were dropped on Portland during the war. We do know that uh, a large number fell in the sea, uh, missing the island altogether, and no doubt a lot of those went unexploded. Um, we know that quite a few have been dragged up by fishermen over the years. But I think the comfort in the whole situation is that it's taken 50 years to find this one. And uh, the, f the fact that it uh, has taken so long, with all the disturbance of the ground that occurs around the top of the area of Portland, I think it's fairly safe to say it's most unlikely that another one will be found.